Good afternoon. Today is October 21st, and my name is Krista Catano. I'm with Family Partners of Morris and Sussex Counties. Thanks for joining us today. We're super excited to have the team here from Prevention is Key. We will introduce them in a brief moment. And before that, I just want to welcome everybody to our Lunch and Learn series. We have um, a bunch of local experts here today that are gonna share some really valuable resources and information with everyone. Um, this is a lunch and learn, so we want it to be a conversation between you guys and our presenters. Um, feel free if you wanna leave your cameras off because you're nibbling on lunch, that's okay with us. Um, you can use the chat to put in any questions and um, we will, work on those at the end of the presentation. And if you wanna try and keep yourself on mute so that way there's no um, feedback on the, on the voices. So um, like I said, today we have prevention is key. We're super excited to have them today. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to you guys and really let you just jump in um, and introduce yourselves. Maybe tell us a little bit um, about how long you've been there and that kind of information. And then you can, have full control, turning it over to you. All right, um, Ashley, I guess I should go, or is that what you wanted to do? Yeah, go for it, Joe, you can introduce All right, yeah. All right so uh, my name is Joe. Um, I uh, work at uh, CARE, Center for Addiction and Recovery and Education um, in Rockaway. I actually run the Dover Center uh, that's located on 60 North Sussex Street in Dover. Um, what am I? I'm a certified peer recovery specialist, which basically means that I use my lived experiences to meet people halfway that might be struggling with the same thing that I did um, over five years ago, which was I had an addiction to opiates and uh, many other drugs. Um, and part of what we teach at CARES is harm reduction. Um, a lot of the times when I talk about harm reduction, it's all over the place. So if you have ADD, I'm just telling you right now, you're in the right place with me today. Um, I actually encourage you to ask me questions during this because it's not going to work and you're not gonna understand it fully if you don't. I want you to interrupt me. Put things in the chat because this could be very confusing to some people. Uh, I know people could get very angry, uh, personally at me when I bring up things and they're like, wait a minute, that's just not the way it should work. Um, but you know, who are we to say? Um, so I'll start with is that I actually grew up in a very strict, uh, I want to say very strict, but strict Polish Irish Catholic family. What does that mean? That means the way to get the things that you want from your children or the way you want them to grow up is to shame them. Um, and it seemed to work, uh, for, for a while. Um, and, uh, my mother never thought that I would, you know, grow up to actually ever use a drug, become an alcoholic or a drug addict. Um, I personally don't identify as someone that was an addict. Um, I got a, uh, a small knee injury and I was giving a bottle of, I was given a bottle of 30 um, Oxycontin. And it, uh, it basically took over my life in a very short period of time. Uh, I was very fortunate that I was able to get into a treatment center for six months um, after using drugs for a year. I started very late in my life. Uh, I was uh, 35 years old. I think I went on until 36 and I'm now 41. And I've been clean for just over five years. Um, when I came to CARES, I, I took the course on how to be a certified peer recovery specialist. Um, and I, I, I hated it. I didn't understand it. Uh, I was getting angry during the course. And the guy who teaches the course is actually a very good friend of mine. He does work at CARES. Um, I didn't get it. And I'll tell you why. Um, because we meet people halfway. And if somebody comes up to me and says, I want to use heroin, how do I do it successfully? Most of you on this that are looking at me right now, like, no, that just doesn't work. Well, for some people it does. Okay. But what I do is I try to get them what they need in the healthiest way. So what does that mean? A very simple thing in harm reduction would be for me to ask someone who is using, where do you get clean needles? And a lot of people would say, well, why the hell would you do that? Why would you encourage someone to use clean needles, to use heroin, to use coke, to use meth? Well, it's very simple. It's in the word harm reduction, which means I'm giving them a clean needle, not me personally, but they're going to get, it. they're getting a clean needle and it's not dirty. They will not get HIV from it. 
They're not getting hepatitis C. They're not going to get cysts. Um, they're, they're not going to get a infection that's going to end up in their arm. That's why I'm encouraging them to go to a place that I will pick out for you that will give you clean needles and clean alcohol swabs and clean cookers for your heroin. Um, this, is, this is a touchy subject. And I, I want, if anyone wants to come back at me with anything, I, I would love to hear it. Um, it angered me when I first started. I was like, absolutely not. The only way to do it is abstinence. That's how I learned. I was locked away in a place for six months. It was the hardest rehab that I've ever, I, I've only been to one. Uh, and you sit there with your thoughts and you get angry. No caffeine, no TV, uh, no phone, nothing. Um, what I wanted when I, when I, re what I really, really wanted when I was at my worst, I, I have two beautiful children. They were probably three and five at the time. And my, I was living in Texas. I was a restaurant owner. I was very successful. Um, I, I wanted a hug. That's what my harm reduction was, but I was being shamed like you piece of shit. How dare you do this to your family? But, but what people don't realize is when you get in the grips of active addiction, your mind is not right. You you're using just to get yourself on a level playing field. So I could go to work so I could make money. But my mind was simply not there. And I, I, I needed I needed comfort. All right. Um, I, I wasn't using needles or anything like that. I was actually I was smoking heroin off a of foil, which led to other drugs and other drugs and other drugs. And I was completely out of control. The best thing for me was to go to the place that I was at and be shamed and work from the ground up for me personally, for me. But some people don't have that option. Some people don't have $20,000 a month that they could spend on rehab. Um, I know people that call me all the time that are on the streets and, um, you know, I feel for them. I do try to get them into rehab, but I don't shame them. I look for the healthiest option that I could give to them. And then we work on it together. Um, you know, a lot of the times harm reduction could be something as simple as a cup of coffee. Um, it could be trying to get them into a, a detox center. I know what's best for them. I, in my head, I know what's best for them because I've dealt with it before. So if they say, I just want to go to detox to get this stuff out of my system, and then I'm out. I don't say a good idea would be to stay for 30 more days to get yourself better. That is the best option for them, but not for me. It's for them, and that's what they want to do. The outcome might be they come out. Joe, you muted yourself. Sorry. Um, the outcome might be that um, they, they might... Um, uh, you know, get out overdose. And then I help them if they want to get back into another center. And they say, I just want to do detox then. I'm, again, I'm not here to encourage anybody um, to do what I think is right. I'm here to, you know, help them with maybe a little advice. Um, but harm reduction does work. It could be as simple as, you know, uh, I know uh, one of our uh, certified peer recovery specialists, Kelly Labar, she goes through Passaic with Narcan kids. Uh, with condoms, with socks, with cloths that uh, you could dissolve in water. Um, harm reduction could be something as simple as bringing, um, you know, the mobile showers to areas. So, you know, people could take a shower and, you know, go to work. Um, we're, we're not really here to prevent anybody from stopping what they're doing. We're just here to, sorry, I can't hear in the background. It seems to be a lot of noise. All right, sorry. Um, so, there's um, multiple pathways of recovery. One of them is partial, and that's reducing harm. That's what we're talking about. Um, partial could be something like somebody who is on heroin who is scared out of their mind to go through withdrawals. Um, if none of you have ever went through withdrawals, I want you to take the flu and it's times 20. That is the biggest fear of anybody who's on opiates. It's that first 24 hours of going through withdrawal. So we say, have you ever tried Suboxone? Um, people are like, well, no, you don't want to do that because then you're going to go through withdrawals with that. I know someone who's been on Suboxone for 10 years who is extremely successful um, and it's just their multiple pathway of recovery and it's respected at Prevention is Key and it cares. Um, other kinds of recovery, which are full, complete abstinence. People who go to AA meetings every day, sometimes twice a day, uh, same thing with NA, they've gone to other treatment centers, and this is only gonna be the thing that works for me. If I start drinking again, it's gonna lead me to other drugs. 
Um, we do see a lot of transformations uh, with people um, who have tried just about everything. And when they start with their multiple pathways of recovery, which I said was like Suboxone or trying our all recovery meetings out, which we have at CARES, all recovery is anyone in recovery, whether it's from, you know, opiates, cocaine, sex, um, uh, gambling, um, addictions to working out, you are all welcome there. Um, and, you know, basically it's um, the way we start it is um, welcome to the all recovery meeting and all recovery meeting is non-denominational, meaning all pathways of recovery are embraced here. Um, I know for certain when I started it during the pandemic, we had like 30 people on it, and some are on Suboxone, some are still using, um, some don't want to stop using, some come on drunk, not what I really like because people tend to ramble on a little bit, but um, you're accepted there, you're not pushed away and being pushed away when you're in active addiction um, has horrible consequences sometimes. Um, I know that I would react different if I knew family members um, were taking drugs or drinking or had any type of alcoholism or you know drug addiction. With family members, me personally, I, and I've done it, I start screaming at them. I'm saying, get your shit together. This is bullshit. With people that I have to work with, it's completely the opposite. I can't explain it. It's just the way I am. Um, but um, again, I, going back to what I was talking about with um, the harm reduction kits, we do Narcan trainings at CARES, and I highly, highly recommend if you do not have Narcan, get it. Because there might be a day, and I hope you don't need it, um, that, you, that you will use it. Um, I went three, three or four years um, at CARES. I always had like two Narcan kits on me, never used it. Just under a year ago, um, I saw a guy at my pool hall get thrown out of a car who was overdosed. Basically, I guess his drug dealer gave him, uh, gave him the money or gave him the drugs and he didn't want to go back to jail. Uh, ended up picking him up. He was dead. I ran to my car. I had two Narcans in there. I hit him with the Narcan. The guy is living today. He's got eight months sobriety. Um, and he comes from a, you know, a good family. He's got a job. Um, so little things like that, you know, uh, don't cause harm in other people's life. So if you want any information, uh, you can come down to Dover. I'll do a quick 10 minute Narcan training with you. If not, reach out to prevention or reach out to CARES. We can set up a Narcan training with you. Um, I know I'm blabbing a lot this is the way I talk. It seems to get across, but let's start with any questions. I have one um, with the Narcan trainings and the Narcan kits. Um, when you do like a quick little class on that, is there an expiration date on those or how long are they good for kind of thing? There is. Um, so I'll tell you two things. One, the expiration is about a year, I believe. Maybe it goes a year and a half. Um, the Narcan that I used on the guy that was in that parking lot had been in my car for a year, which you're not supposed to do, but it still worked. So yes, there is an expiration date on it. And all you have to do is bring it in and we'll give you a new one. Doesn't cost you anything. No other questions? Wow. I do have a question. Okay, go ahead, Jennifer. So, oh wow, you can see my name on here. Usually you can't, okay. <laughs> So, I mean, how do we help people who have a sex addiction? So I, I am a former peer recovery specialist. Um, and my first encounter, actually, after I stopped um, doing my volunteer work as a peer recovery specialist, and now I, I work at Norwest Cap, and a friend of mine, I just realized he has a sex addiction, and this is completely different from you know uh what i had been trained on right so that was like five years ago and i'm sure everything has changed by now and i i like part of me feels guilty because i i won't hang out with him because it's like sex 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 but at the same time it's like i want to be there for him but at the same time i'm like i can't right so i don't know what to do besides keep on pushing the meetings and um so I, I just don't know, but I, I'm so, 
I don't know. He's my best friend and I'm concerned about him because of, you know, STIs and things of that nature. And then I I, I just don't know what to do. I'm at that point. You know what I mean? Well, you're doing it. So you just said you're pushing meetings, which is fine. You are his friend. You're not his certified peer recovery specialist. All right. Uh, Not hanging out with someone with a drug addiction is the same thing as not hanging out with someone who has addiction to heroin or alcohol. You know, I don't want to be around someone who's drunk. I don't want to be around someone who's shooting up. I don't. That, that's my pathway. Um, helping them finding, you know, literature for them to give, you know, they have to make the decision to do it. But you're not doing anything to shame them. So really, it's just the same, the same uh, course of action for... Um... Of course. I mean, it's, it's somebody wrote, uh, you know, food addiction, um, eating disorders. Um, yeah. So I, w- one of my, th- one of my, my addictions, I hate using the word addiction. One of the things I really like to do is when, when I first got into rehab, I said, I am going to get jacked. I'm going to get ripped. I'm going to the gym every day. I think I've probably been, I missed maybe a month of working out only because I just had surgery on my feet for the last five years. And I've gone just about to the gym at least five to six days a week. Uh, I can't stop. It's something one that keeps me clean, but it's healthy. My diet is very healthy too. One of the things that I did that I wasn't aware of is I was shaming someone who has an eating disorder and I didn't realize I was doing it until it was brought up to me. And one of the things was, I don't say like you're getting too skinny, you're getting too fat. It's nothing like that. It was, let's talk about protein. Let's talk about a healthy diet. And why would someone with an eating disorder want to talk about diet to me? I want to get them to talk to me about it first and ask them what they think they should do about it. So maybe a good way of doing it is saying, what would you do? And that's how the conversation starts. And that's what makes us a peer recovery specialist compared to a counselor or a therapist or even a sponsor. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? I'm here to ask. here to answer anything you got. So um I, my internet cut out a little bit in the beginning, um, so I just moved to a new spot. But um, did you mention in the beginning, I know you're talking about harm reduction, which I think is an, a newer phrase some people are maybe kind of just learning about. Um, did you talk about like safe centers, or I'm not sure what if there's a better name for them, but places where people you do go to use safely? Is that something related to what you guys do? Um, if so, don't quote me on this yet. The first part I want to say is move to Portugal because they do it everywhere there. Um, I don't know of any safe centers to use yet. I don't even think it's legal. The only thing that's really legal right now is marijuana. Um, I was actually just in Toronto yesterday and I went into a cannabis shop. I couldn't believe it. Um, and there's no, there's no cops anywhere. Everybody seems to have a little bit of a smirk and happy on their face. I'm like, oh, I guess everybody outside smoking weed. People are walking by. Um, so to answer your question, I, I, I don't have the information on it. I, there's really no safe plate yet. You can't inject anywhere just yet. They are trying to pass. I know in Rhode Island, it's coming. That I know. Um, but, and there's another thing with, uh, you know, marijuana. Um, they say 80% of people that go from opiates to smoking marijuana daily, stay off of opiates. Um, I, I have 156 peers. I would say, I don't know, 50 or 60 of them smoke pot daily. It's just, it's what works for them, you know? So that's harm reduction. It's a way of getting a little bit healthier instead of, you know, putting a needle in your arm. Anyone else? so we have um we work with a lot of families with parents 
would you have any, um, or I'm sorry, I have that one. We have worked with a lot of families, parents of um, children who may be having some kind of issue like this. What would you um, suggest or recommend for parents? Do you have any advice for? Sure. Uh, kind of we outcome? have we have a thing called craft at, at CARES. Um, and I believe the meeting is, I think it's once a week. Um, and it's not just for, for parents. It's, um, it could be for your spouses or your brothers or sisters. Um, so it's on Thursdays from six to seven. Um, I'll put it in the chat there. Um, it's, it's definitely a good meeting because I, I struggled with having, um, believe it or not, an alcoholic uh, ex-girlfriend and I'm still struggling with it now. Um, I went on the craft meetings even though I went at CARES because I have to change my mindset a little bit. Um, it definitely helps um, because it is a struggle. You know, we, we've at CARES, I think during the pandemic, we lost about 20 peers, you know, to overdoses. Um, and people go through a lot with that. Um, sometimes they blame themselves. Um, I kicked him out on the street. The next day he was dead. Um, and this is where the harm reduction comes in. It's kind of like, it's all those what ifs. So, but yeah, I'll put it in the chat. It's called Craft. It's, it's run by uh, Christina Fagan um, and she'll reach out. She'll actually, we have craft clients. It's a, you have an hour conversation with them once a week. I highly recommend it. Is that also um, the same kind of thing or are there other support groups that you know of for uh, family members of maybe someone dealing with addiction? Um, Kraft is the only one that I know um, with CARES. Uh, we also had a meeting, it was like chicken soup for the soul that was on Sundays for people who have lost someone. Um, but yeah. I see Al-Anon, uh, I've gone to Al-Anon. Uh, we don't have Al-Anon meetings, but um, we could definitely provide you with the information to get to one, yeah. Actually, I'm sorry, we do. We just, we just started Al-Anon meetings are Wednesdays from six to seven. So I'll put that in the chat too. You could also go to Prevention is Key. Um, I'll actually put that in there and it has all the information that you would need. So I think, I mean, I think that's a perfect segue too, that um, we do have the parent programs or for family members craft, but uh, we also have Megan um, here and she is a program coordinator for our um, program called Peer. And so that is to support our youth who may be affected by either parent or other family members. So it's kind of, um, we have our parent program, but then we do have programs that serve our youth. So Joe, if you don't have anything else, um, I guess we could just hand it over to Megan if you're good with that. Right. Awesome. Go ahead, Megan. Awesome, awesome. I do have a PowerPoint, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen just so everyone can kind of follow along easily. So if anyone has any issues seeing that, please feel free to let me know. Um, okay, so I am Megan. I am the program coordinator for Peer, and we have, so that's me. We have these fun little bios that we kind of try to give out to our youth to kind of put a face to the program. Because when you're just like, oh, peer, youth mentoring, come. They don't know why they're coming. So this is me, a little fun fact about me. I graduated from Rutgers with my master's in social work. We also have our mentors. This is one of them, his name is Miss Sim. Some fun facts about him. And another mentor that we have is Ariel. Some fun facts about her as well. They both have been with us for about a year or so now, and they've been working in different avenues of our peer program. Nisim actually works with the detention center, and Ariel runs a group at the youth shelter. So those are two avenues that we have connections, but we're open to connecting more on an individual basis. So peer is a grant from the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency, and our main focus is youth ages 11 to 17 in Morris and Passaic County. These youth are individuals who have experienced ACEs, adverse childhood experiences, which can also include COVID at this point. Family members are, who are or currently have used 
opioids system involved youth like the detention center or even the youth shelter or youth that are currently misusing or have misused opioids or drugs. With that, what we do is we go ahead and we connect these youth to Ariel and the SIM, any of our pick or care staff to mentor up with each other. The match is typically paired for one year and they try to meet about once a week, either in a group setting or an individual setting, kind of depending on how the youth might benefit. Our ideal is the group setting because we do feel that connecting them to each other as well can build that support system for them. We also have confidentiality amongst them all. We also offer family nights and engagements for the family as a whole, and kind of how Joe just mentioned the craft meetings as well. We recently had a Movies in the Park event in Rockaway that was amazing. It was great to see all these families coming out and supporting each other. Um, as far as the mentor role, they it's a volunteer basis. Everyone has to agree to it. It's a mutually exclusive or mutually rewarding experience, sorry. So the mentor and the mentee are both gaining something from this relationship. The mentors often have experience in any of these ACEs or the substance abuse side of things to kind of lead a guiding hand and not really a supporting hand. We try to really, kind of how Joe is also saying, like ultimately the choice is yours. We wanna help guide you to the right decision but at the end of the day, you need to make the decision that's based best for you. A lot of these relationships will create their own goals to kind of reach and communicate on. As far as mentees, they are the responsibility is to meet with the mentor, communicate with them weekly, and go from there, just build that relationship, build that support, build that, those positive outlets, whether it be going for ice cream, going to watch a movie, sitting and talking at lunch, just having that person to kind of talk about life and not be a judgmental or a factor of being like, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. Ultimately, our mission is for mentees to develop their personal goals and figure out what they want to do and who they want to be. And we'll give some coaching and some feedback along the way. With that in mind, this is how we can kind of get some referrals going, whether that be through schools, through individuals. If you even have a kid that you're like, mm, my son, my daughter would be a great fit for this. Let's get them involved. They, we need to work on the social aspect after COVID. They're feeling disconnected. This is a great opportunity. This link here will bring you straight to our website where there's a referral. You will complete the referral and email it back to me. Um, I can also throw this all in the chat. And that's pretty much a very quick brief overview of who we are and what we do. Our biggest, biggest goal right now is to get these connections with these youth and show them that there are other outlets, other things, other groups, other friends to hang out with than people that might be in negative influences in their life or encouraging them to do things that might not be in the best interest of themselves. So that was very brief, very quick, but I can open the floor to any questions. That's really awesome information. I'm really excited to hear about that. Um, also, what we can do is if you want to send me um, any links or attachments, I'm going to send up a follow um, a follow up email to everyone here as well with any kind of additional resources. So, and we'll also have a recording of this presentation. So if anyone has anything to add um, or throw it in the chat too, that's, that's fine. Did anyone have any other questions about this? We have a quiet crew today. Um, I thought it was also really interesting and I hadn't thought about it yet, but throwing COVID into the ACEs category, that's like, that's a biggie because the kids um, and the young young adults, that's a big um, part of their childhood now, the kids growing up with virtual schooling and fears yeah. and anxieties, yeah. And that's something that we kind of, me and the mentors as well, kind of discussed that the fact of a lot of these youth are feeling disconnected, whether it be with their peers or with their teachers. Like it took away that face-to-face -face interaction. And we're hoping to kind of help them 
get back to that and get more comfortable with talking in person face to face as well. We do offer some virtual options if the family is really gunning for that, but we do ultimately want to have people together and start building those connections again. And Krista, speaking of ACEs, we do in um, Morris County specifically, we have uh, an ACEs action team. Um, so for anyone who's interested, um, I could drop my email in the chat, but we have, we, we um, meet on a bi-monthly basis and we actually have created a web page on the Prevention is Key website um, that provides more resources and different handouts that we are trying to, you know, raise awareness on ACEs and the different things that we could do to address that within our um, communities. Uh, so again, if anyone's interested, I'll drop my email in the chat. So for Morris County, we do have um, that resource to talk about ACEs. So I don't want to jump the gun here. Is anyone else going to be presenting or is that all the information? Actually, I'm muted. Oh, you're muted. Oh. Yep. Nope, that was all we have, the harm reduction and the peer program that we're discussing. Awesome. So thank you so much for all that. And we'll definitely, we'll send everything out with all these resources. Um, were there any other questions or um, about any of these topics that anyone might have, feel free to unmute yourself and um, ask or put it in the chat. I'm just gonna double check to make sure we didn't miss anything. Um, I did see one, I don't know if we had covered it, but how does craft differ from Al-Anon? Did we talk about that? Is it um, just drugs? rather than alcohol? So it's, it's just a different style, I guess, of uh, approaching the situation. We also have uh, people who are um, like certified craft trainers as well. So you get paired up with somebody and once a week, you have like an hour conversation with them and you could also get on a meeting once a week um, because it, you need someone to call when you know, things are going bad or even if they're going good. Um, so it's similar to Al-Anon, just in a different setting, I would say. Thank you. Um, another thing I was thinking about, um, what have you seen with, in regards to like COVID, um, like, numbers going up? Have you noticed things going back down at all now? Or what's your kind of spin on that? Um, COVID, was, COVID was tough right in the beginning. Um, I think everybody thought we had a grip on it. Like, let's all come together, hold hands kind of thing, and let's get through this. Um, but I want you to imagine everyone being out of work and getting uh, a check, you know, every, every two or three weeks. And you're at home. And you go on one meeting, you know, a day and you get bored. You know, treatment centers aren't accepting you as fast as they can because of all the restrictions, you know, so things kind of spiral. Um, you know, we, we, it's not like we, we see things getting better every day. I mean, fentanyl is really what's hurting the community right now. Um, if you don't know what fentanyl is, it's 25 to 50 times as powerful as heroin. Um, and you never know what you're getting. Um, another, I'll give you an example, never harm reduction. In Passaic, we have fentanyl test strips where you could put a little bit of what you get in your bag of heroin, you shake it up, you put like this dipstick in there and it'll show if it's uh, positive for fentanyl or not. What does that do? The person might not use or they might just use a little bit. Um, and we also give them, you know, Narcan with that just in case, you know, there, there's nothing that we could do to prevent you from going to use a drug. We could just educate you. Um, so another little statistic is that 80% use 
you have an 80% chance of getting fentanyl over heroin right now in the state of New Jersey. So if someone's going out and thinking that they're getting heroin from their straight shooter or drug dealer, they're probably not. So if that answers your question. Yeah, that's really scary. And I think that's also um, part of the reason why there's been so many overdoses, right? Absolutely. And it used to be four milligrams of Narcan. People are, I, I, I was at the hospital where I saw a guy get hit with Narcan six times going in and out. And I'll give you an example. Like, you know, it's a, a very little um, amount of powder that you see that's in um, a stamped, like it's like a piece of parchment paper that they put in. It's a very small amount. You can overdose on fentanyl off a piece that's probably the size of a piece of salt or a half a piece of kosher salt. That's all it takes to overdose on fentanyl. So. So in the, um, you mentioned the, the harm reduction bag, go bags you have, where, did you share where um, people can get those? Uh, well, we give them out in uh, Passaic and Essex County as of right now. Um, it depends on what county you're in, but, um, you know, usually it's out on the street that, you know, and, and again, these packs could be anything from, you know, deodorant to, you know, lip balm, um, but, when we're out there on the Hope One uh, bus in Morris County, um, you know, anyone could come there and we could provide services. We also do telephone recovery support. So if there's anyone in Morris County that you know, um, give us a call. If, you know, tell the, whoever is struggling with drug addiction, they could give us a call. And at CARES, we have someone, a volunteer or someone who's paid to reach out to that person once or twice a week just to see how they're doing. You know, they could pick up the phone, say, I'm fine, hang up. Um, the reason that we do this is, you know, maybe that's one day where somebody gets a call um, and they need help from us. You know, I, I, I've been calling the same guy for nine months, never picked up the phone. One day he picked up the phone and he's like, God, thank you for calling me. I hear your messages every single week. And he's like, I need to get help. So it's called telephone recovery support. So again, you know, give cares a call. They could, you know, say, hey, you know, I know someone who needs it, but they have to reach out to us. We can't just say, hey, can you, you know, call my son or brother or, you know, uncle. Awesome. We actually, we just had Hope One and the Hope Hub um, do a presentation uh, a couple weeks ago. And that was, again, great, great resources out there. Um, if anyone uh, didn't catch that, it is on our YouTube channel, or you can visit any of their websites too. Um, another really phenomenal resource and out in the community. Um, I've seen the, the truck on the green in Morristown a couple of times now, just driving by. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's really cool to see that. So, sure. um, and does anyone else have any questions or um, comments or anything else? Um, hey there, this is Laura from Sussex County, um, the Center for Prevention and Counseling. We have a lot of similar, the same programs. Um, so if anybody's on from Sussex, uh, we would be kind of instead of Morris, they can refer to us. Um, I just wanted to say the mentoring program sounds really amazing. And I think very necessary right now, um, just with what I've been seeing and hearing from school personnel, even um, for how the kids are behaving. And um, so, Good work you guys are doing. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, it's great that um, we have Sussex County too. Um, so I'll make sure I'll include those links as well in the follow up. So um, I guess with that being said, if no one else has any other questions, um, do you guys have any other closing comments or do you have any events coming up you want to um, highlight maybe? We covered a lot, so this is really great. Thank you guys so Thank much. Thank you for um, inviting us for today and having a, uh, letting us prevent our programs. I would like to, um, so it's Jennifer Combs, um, and I'm, I'm with Norwest Cap over in Wharton County. So, and we also, you know, our Norwest Cap helps out with the five major counties. We are looking to um, have a training done for Norwest Cap over in Warren County and also 
uh, probably in the other counties as well for our Norwest cap. So I don't know if you'd be willing to uh, shoot me an email and maybe we can arrange that if that would be all right. Um, so that this way, all of us could be trained on Narcan. What county are you in? I mean, we're in Warren County, Huntington County, Somerset County, Sussex, uh, Morris County, and I know I'm missing one county. For, Mor for Morris, we could probably definitely do it. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Jasmine, you got that one? Jasmine's on here too. So, yeah. So, if you so want to drop your email in the chat and we'll make sure that we get the information to you, that's that great. Works. Thank you so much here. I'm going to put it in there. Alrighty, well, thank you guys so much for your time, um, for the work you do. It's so abundantly necessary. Um, and I'm really glad that programs like this exist. So, and coming in, sharing with everybody. So um, thanks, thank you big time for coming. And um, just a reminder to everybody, we are here every Thursday for Lunch and Learn with different topics every Thursday. Um, next week, we have a someone coming in to talk about self-harm um, and how to talk to youth about that. Um, so another tough topic, but we got to talk about these things. So um, we hope you can join us again. Thank you so much for coming and stay safe. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you having you. us. Thank you. Thank you.